I have someone to introduce you to. This is my new chinchilla. She's about three months old. She is a light tan, which is a beige mixed with an ebony. So she is a very interesting color. Anyways, I actually traveled seven hours to pick her up. I went over two states and it was very scary for me. She actually did great. Here we go. So this is the chinchilla. Child. Chin child. So if you guys are interested in learning how to travel with a chinchilla So if you guys are interested in learning how to travel with a chinchilla I give you all of my tips and tricks on traveling long distances with your chinchilla. So check out that video However today in this video, I'm going to be giving you a full cage tour However, today in this video, I'm going to be giving you a full cage tour. There are specifics you want in your cage for a younger chinchilla. So I'm going to be giving you all of my tips and tricks on a younger chinchilla. So let's get into it. I just wanna give you a little bit of a disclaimer before we start the video. This cage tour is primarily for chinchillas that are a little bit bigger, so around that three to four months of age, but still under that six months. If you have a baby baby chinchilla, you want to have a cage with smaller bar spacing and the ledges in the cage need to be six inches or lower, if any. Okay guys, so it has been a full day with my new chinchilla here. If you guys have any name suggestions, I would love to hear them in the comments. So please comment them below. But I want to give you a little bit of a tour of her cage. And I just wanna go over some basic care for caring for a baby chinchilla. So let's get into her cage tour. So this is her. She is a uh, freaking adorable. Her ears flop, which I've never seen a chinchillas do before. And she may or may not try to escape. We'll see how that goes, but I'm thinking she might want to try. So we'll see. I'll keep an eye on her, but she's very friendly. She's quite nervous. She's not too sure about me, but all of my other chinchillas would be hiding at this point and she's out in the open. So let me just go over how I designed her cage and all of that. I'm gonna start with the outside door. So first I have this lava ledge and with lava ledges, sometimes they break. So I had to, but the other lava ledge, the uh, screw was not working out in there. It broke out. So unfortunately I only have this one here now. So I'm gonna need to pick up another one to have two here. But I have this in here to make it easier for her to get onto this shelf here. And you'll also notice that in her cage, I have added a lot of larger shelves and they're very close to the ground. And the reason for that is when she's young, meaning under six months of age, She's gonna be a little bit more clumsy, so we wanna make sure there aren't any serious falls or anything like that, so that's why everything is very close to the ground. Everything is just very big, so that she doesn't miss and end up hurting herself. So on this side, I have these two large shelves in the corner back there. This is a corner shelf, and I have made all of the shelves myself. I didn't have enough time to make poop guards or anything like that, so they're just the basic shelf. So if you guys are interested in how I made these, I actually created a video that talks about five different shelf designs that you can make for your cage. This would be considered the basic one on that video. So we have a corner shelf back there and the shelf, if you can see, has the corner cut out for my Ferret Nation cage because it has this big metal piece. It makes it a lot easier to not have that corner in. And we do this so that both edges of the shelf would touch the cage because if we had that corner there, it would be one or the other and we would have to 
bend the cage into the hardware in order for it to stay up there. So just a tip, if you do have a cage that has a big metal piece, to just cut off the corners of your corner shelves. It makes it so, so, so much easier to mount them. And then this smaller shelf up here, this was actually a shelf that broke in half. So you can see it's a little bit more of a live edge. And the reason why I have it here is because it's so narrow this way. I wanted to be able to have a bigger shelf underneath it in case she missed. She has kind of like a safety net to catch her. And then the other side of this is on this side here. So you can see, again, this one has a live edge on the side here. And this one's a little bit of a bigger shelf. And on the wall or on the door here, I have the way to get up to this shelf. So this piece then moves on to this back piece, which also helps her to get onto this higher piece. It, this piece is a larger piece and it is very close to the ground for her. So you can see that she dug a hole down there. She's been sleeping down there. She feels quite safe. It's kind of like a little hut that she made. I don't know why she doesn't use this hut I actually bought from her at PetSmart, but regardless, she made her own hut in there. And then I just have another smaller shelf up above this shelf. And again, I have this shelf here because this bigger shelf is her safety nut in case she misses that shelf. So I got this hut from PetSmart. Once I'm able to make my own hut, this will be taken out of here because I hate these huts. It comes with a, uh, a hay feeder back here. And I had one of these for Pig and she just chewed all the bars off of it. I don't know, I just I really don't like this hut. I am planning on making a new one and making a video for you guys. I just want to make sure that I make it in the most easy way possible. So expect a video on hut making, but right now we are just using this temporarily. And then again, her hay is here. She also has her food dish, which again, this is what I'm using temporarily because I do plan on bonding her with Lola so they'll share a bowl once they are living together. So I'm just using a ceramic dish. Hold on, she's trying to escape. Hi there, are you gonna bite my fingers? Are you gonna get on my hand? My goodness. Anyways, so I'm just using a ceramic dish from my kitchen until she is ready to be paired with Lola and then she'll share a bowl with Lola. If you get a new chinchilla, you will most likely have to transition them to a new food. So this doesn't just apply to the younger chinchillas. So let me just talk to you guys about how to go about transitioning. So you first want to start off with mostly their old food. So you want to make sure that you are getting food from the breeder. So the first week, I would say you want to give about 75% your old food and you want to start introducing your new food. So you wanna have 25% of the new food. So in my case, I have my breeder's food and then the new food is the Oxbow. If they do well with that and they don't have any diarrhea or any digestive issues, you can move on to week two, where during week two, you're going to have a 50-50 split. So you will have 50% of the old food and 50% of your new food, so the oxbow. And again, if that all goes well, you're gonna go to week three. During week three, you're going to give 75% of the new food and only 25% of the old food. Again, if that goes all good over that week on week four, you should be able to give them fully the new food and they should be fully transitioned. Right now we are in the bricks of transitioning her to the Oxbow Essentials that I use. So right now she is getting mostly her old food and like a little bit of Oxbow in there, which she seems to like. She seems to pick out the Oxbow, but we just wanna make sure that her digestive system can handle all of that because chinchilla's digestive systems are weird, right? With the floppy ears, oh my goodness. There's a couple more things in her cage that I want to mention. First off, 
Hold on, she's trying to escape. Okay, first off, I have this archway. So I have a whole bunch of little shelves that I just put together. As you can see now, she's demonstrating. But um, I just put them very close together and then above this area. So again, if she clumsily miss, she has a safeguard. She can just fall from a short distance instead of a longer distance. So we have a cute little rainbow for her to go on. And then you can see I have a water guard here, but there's no water bottle there yet. I want to transition her to my stick water bottles, which is essentially like this one that has a stick instead of a ball. But I'm not sure if she knows how to use one, so I'm going to, again, transition her slowly from that. And right now I just want to make sure that she is drinking water so she has a ball water bottle but we will be transitioning her. So I put the ball water bottle close to where I'm gonna put the stick water bottle so that she associates this corner with water. Are you gonna eat my clothes? Why are you so stinking cute? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so that is her cage. I just wanna go over a couple baby tips. I do have a video where I talk all about baby facts, so you can check out that when I got Quinn. But let me give you the basics. So first off, when you have a chinchilla under the age of six months, you're going to want to make sure that your cage is safe in the sense of you want to make sure the bar spacing is small enough so that they can't escape. Because if they are small enough, even if it doesn't look like they can get through it, they may try and injure themselves in the process. So you want to avoid that. And if it is a question, you can either talk to your breeder or you can baby proof your cage and put a hardware mesh on the outside, which again, I have a video explaining how to do that. But another thing is you do not want to put a wheel in a baby chinchilla's cage until they are six months of age. And this is because they can't regulate their body temperature. So running on a wheel could be very detrimental to their health. You don't want to promote that. So on top of that, you don't want to put them into playtime either because again, they can't regulate their body temperature at this age. So they might overexert themselves. They might overexert themselves and you don't want them to get into heat stroke and have any problems with that. So no playtime and no wheel. Huh? Huh? Whoop. Chinchillas under the age of six months should not have any treats whatsoever. And the reason for this is because they have a hard time processing those sugars. So treats can actually make them very sick. So I would avoid giving them any treats in any amount until they are at that six months of age. As for their food, I would give them as much hay and as much pellets as they are willing to eat because at this age, they are constantly growing and chinchillas tend to not overeat their hay and their pellets. They eat what they need. So if they are eating all of their hay, you should replenish it. If they're eating all their pellets, you should replenish it. I know a lot of people say that you should only give them a fourth of a cup, but I personally believe that all of their nutrition is in those pellets. So it is important to free feed pellets. They should have as much as they wanna eat. Now, if you guys need more information on baby chinchillas, so like I said, I have a video where I tell you how to escape proof a ferret nation cage. So make sure you guys check out that video. On top of that, if you do need any more basic care, I do have a chinchilla care guide that is filled with all of the information you need to know about taking care of a chinchilla, as well as a full checklist of the items that you're going to need for your chinchilla as well. That will be in the link in the the description below so you can get your copy and get all ready for your new chinchilla. If you guys really do like these cage tour videos, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell because in my next video, I'm going to be giving you all of my recommendations of stuff you should have for your chinchilla. That is everything that you need to care for a chinchilla, but I'm going to be giving you a budget list and a luxury list, meaning I will give you a list of everything that you possibly need for your chinchilla 
chinchilla on a budget and I'm going to give you a little bit more of an upgraded list if you want to upgrade your chinchilla. So while you guys wait, make sure to check out these videos next and I will see you guys in the next one.